it's a pleasure to introduce to you the gentleman with possibly the biggest microphone in the whole gang, Matthias Winkelmann. A gentleman who luckily agreed to give us an introduction into Unreal Engine. But before that, let me give you an introduction to who is Matthias Winkelmann. So, hello Matthias, how are you? And who are you? So yeah, um, my name is Matthias Winkelmann. I'm a 3D generalist, 3D artist, creative director, motion designer, all of that bunch. I work in the industry for quite a few years now. I mainly worked with studios in the past. Um, I was at Manvis Machine for a few years in London before I moved to Berlin to work with Foam Studio. Uh, recently, I started to be freelance uh, and now I'm working with different studios on different projects. And one of those diverse projects of yours that uh, caught my attention and apparently um, most of the internet's attention as well was um, a young person, a young being called Rachel. <laughs> Uh, Rachel is not real is a project I released a couple of months ago, I think. And it's a personal project that I worked on in the, in the last months, like since earlier this year. And it's a automated software that I built inside Unreal Engine. And before I released the whole project, I just created a fake Instagram account, which uh, is called Rachelic. And it's the Instagram account of the fake identity of Rachel Leary who is creating beautiful Instagram dailies every day. The, the joke or the twist behind that was that I created a software inside Unreal Engine that builds all these images automatically and uploads them via a custom Python script to, to Instagram. Rachel is not real. She doesn't exist. Um, she literally automatically starts up every day and posts an image and, and without me intervening at all. To me, this whole project um, seemed a bit like a biting criticism or a biting commentary on the dailies <laughs> culture that's so prevalent on Instagram. Was, was that its concept or what was your intention with it? I, I wouldn't say it's a biting criticism. Um, I, I really didn't intend to piss anyone off. Just want to make that clear. Um, I, I love the dailies culture. I think it's a really good tool to learn any software and also to practice your design skills. But it's a little bit of a comment on, an, on our growing obsession with quantity over quality. Um, ultimately, especially in the time of, of the rise of AI and, and uh, singularity and the automation is coming and all that kind of stuff, we, I think it's important that we, we focus again on what makes us creatives, what makes us a designer, and, and that is conceptual thinking, um, creative new design techniques, really like thinking about what you're making and, and, and understanding images as a form of visual communication. And I think that Instagram obsession has, has grown a little bit into, I have to post something every day so people don't forget me. Um, I'm really bad at this. I'm really bad at posting on Instagram regularly, which is maybe also why I created a bot that makes it now for me. Um, but ultimately, because when I started in the industry, you know, Vimeo was really big. Like it was like somebody released a film every six months at most um, and, and that everybody was onto that then. And that has shifted a lot. And that also has a huge impact on what we do, on, on what clients want us to do. Um, yeah, so for me, it's criticism in, in, in some sort of form, but much more a comment of like, you know, we need to focus on conceptual thinking and design ideas moving forward, not just crafts. Does Rachel do conceptual thinking or does Rachel have taste in a certain way? I mean, Rachel has a certain taste that I gave her, I guess. Um, it's funny because for me, the images Rachel is creating are not necessarily my work. My work is the concept of creating her identity and, and giving her that style. Um, and, and I mean, taste is something extremely subjective. So maybe she has taste, maybe she doesn't, I don't know. You have to tell me that. I mean, obviously it's like she makes use of a specific technique that we use as designers all the time. It's, it's a three-dimensional grid system. So in 2D graphic design, using a grid system and layouts is, is like the most common thing in the world. Um, and in 3D design, we've also started doing that a lot in the last years. And, and that's the technique she uses. Um, it's just that she uses it in an automated way based on randomizing algorithms. So you built Rachel in Unreal Engine. And from what I've seen from your work, you've been increasingly using Unreal Engine recently. Why is that? Um, it's not recently, to be honest. I've been using Unreal Engine for like around four years now. Um, 
and I got into it really uh, purely out of personal interest. Uh, it kind of started with um, the whole rise of VR headsets. Um, I got into the Oculus DK1 a little bit and, and it made me sick immediately, but I loved it. Uh, <laughs> and then before the HTC Vive was released, the Oculus Rift came out. I pre-ordered all of them and I got really into it because I felt it's the first time that we as 3D artists will be able to actually experience our work in a, in a almost real physical space. I wanted to create content for that, so I... I looked into game engines and I, I specifically started learning Unreal Engine because I thought that's the way for me to create content for VR. And then I, I built a VR game. Uh, I never released it, but still it was a really good way for me to learn the platform. And while the, the enthusiasm around VR slowly faded a little bit, um, that enthusiasm for real-time CG was just like growing and growing. Um, so for a couple of years now, I've been trying to do free projects on the side where I use the engine um, and, and just, you know, just because I'm really enjoying working in it. What, in your opinion, is the most enjoyable or the most compelling argument for Unreal Engine? I'm not sure if it has to be an argument. Using a game engine in your work basically means you're learning a new trade. It's not, it's not really being used a lot in like the traditional rendering animation sequence path tracer workflow. It's predominantly used in the games industry or maybe in the in the context of interactive art installations. If you are keen to dive into a new space where you can create new forms of expression and, and you know, double around with interactivity or building games, then, then that's the argument. But, you know, it's just like, if you're interested in that space, then you should go for it. And do you see a motivation for the traditional motion graphics or um, 3D animation guy to um, explore Unreal Engine? Oh yeah, definitely because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> what is the fun part about it? I mean, uh, you don't have to render. Um, I hate rendering, so I think there was also one big point why I got into it. Uh, you don't have to render, so you just you see what you get, um, and that's that's huge fun because you just build something, you press play, and it's there. And and you know, it's it's such a different way of interacting with um, computer graphics. Ultimately, I guess I mean anything should always the best reason for getting into it should be because you want to do it and you have fun doing it. A lot of people are, are curious about it right now, um, latest with the announcement of Unreal Engine 5, um, but also like last year, RTX being introduced to the game engines. Um, and then even now with these new things like virtual production, where you replace the green screen with a set of LEDs behind the actors and, and use Unreal Engine to drive the content in real time. So there are a lot of things like this happening right now, which might be a reason for people to get into it but it's still it still is a very much experimental field that that is not really that commonly used in especially the motion graphics field but maybe it will be more in the future so we'll see from your experience in the commercial space um do clients already ask for interactive or specifically for unreal engine projects not specifically i do see a growing interest from other studios um to to dive into it and to explore how it could influence their work. Um, clients are usually, um, especially in the advertising world, they're usually a bit slower to catch up on that. And also, um, to be fair, there's not really a marketing medium for it right now. Like most traditional marketing still goes through images or videos. Where do, where, where do you see the biggest chance for clients and maybe for designers alike in using interactive engines as their medium? I think there's still a lot of exploration to be done of how we could use it and how it could influence what we do. Um, I've used it in the past a few times on commercial projects for clients, but the majority was more like traditional workflows. For example, I built a previous software for um, a project we did at Manvis Machine a few years ago for the New York Fashion Week, um, where we wanted to shoot something. But before we went into the shoot, we wanted to really make sure everything works. So I built the whole seen the whole set in Unreal and use it to actually, you know, understand the context of the lighting structure that we wanted to build. Um, so for, for these kind of, especially for Brevis, it's already really big and, and, and I think it is really helpful. But beside that, it, it's still, I think a lot of clients are interested and curious about what they could do with it, but there's still, as I said, there's still a lot of exploration going on of how we could actually use it. So we've been mentioning the benefits of using Unreal Engine and dabbling in Unreal Engine. Are there any downsides of, uh, to it? Um, if you are coming from a traditional path tracer workflow where you are used to really high quality rendering and all these kind of things, then 
there are still compromises that you have to make. Unreal Engine is a real-time engine. It's built for performance. I mean, it can create those images in real time. Like there is no, or almost no rendering time. Um, so in order to be able to do that, um, they use a multitude of crazy techniques to, to get that image out there um, without having to go all the path tracer route. So knowing that it comes with limitations that you have to be aware of, and it comes with um, certain artifacts that you're not used to when you work in path tracer um, environments. That was also my impression when <clears throat> I first tried it with your help actually was um, it helps to keep in mind that they come from a history of games and a history of wanting to run everything as fast as possible and thus employing an incredible amount of very, very different hacks, basically. Yeah. And if you keep that in mind, at least for me, it helped accept the bunch of quirks that all those techniques thrown together cause sometimes. Yeah. I mean, just be aware of that, you know, RTX real-time ray tracing was just introduced last year. It's basically a, like a bit more than a year old inside the engine. And prior to that, um, the, the lighting was predominantly uh, calculated, especially things like GI by baking it into light maps. And even now, this is like the much more common way of using Unreal is like baking mm -hmm. the light, not doing RTX. Um, I think it's just now for us who are coming from these path tracer backgrounds and are used to like, you know, light bouncing properly, um, we all turn it on immediately and, and forget that this is still a pretty young technique uh, inside the engine. Do you have any other words of advice or any things to be aware of for people coming from maybe another tool set towards Unreal Engine? so that they are not immediately scared away or shocked. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, you just need to be curious and, and want to explore it. I, I wouldn't go into it and say like, hey, I'm going to replace my workflow now with real-time rendering and, and um, make everything in Unreal from now on. And you could do that, but, but it's not a replacement. If you're coming from a path tracer workflow, it's not replacing that. Uh, I think that we have to be honest about that. Um, but it opens up so many more possibilities. Um, for example, you know, we are used to traditionally render images or image sequences. Um, if you work in Unreal Engine, you can do both of those, but you can also make a mobile application. You can build an interactive game. You can build a completely standalone software that generates images and uploads them automatically to Instagram every day. <laughs> and that was the exciting part for me. It opens up the range of things you can do immensely but it comes with other aspects that you need to be aware of when, when you get into it. One of those aspects to be aware of when you're getting into it is, at least for me, is its place in the pipeline. Where does Unreal fit in your set of tools? Um, it's a good question because it really always depends on, on what the um, final result is that you want to achieve. Uh, I tried using it in, in a lot of different scenarios, and I also tried replacing um, the path tracer in between um, which didn't end up too well um, because it was for printing resolution. And anyway, that's that's a different story. If you're going for, for example, an interactive application as an end result of the project you're working on, then obviously it's your main hub. Everything ends up in Unreal. But you still have to create the geometry in a different application. Unreal has some capabilities of, of modeling, but, but you, you are better off to just create it somewhere else. And for example, animation, um, Epic put a lot of effort into improving the animation, the, the linear animation inside Unreal Engine by introducing a new sequencer. I think it was around last year, a few versions ago, which is really good to, you know, create nice animation curves and things like that. Um, basically, it just is your hub where lighting, rendering, animation can happen, but it, it lifts a lot from um, importing the assets from other application. That is one thing that I think was helping me in the beginning once i accepted it that unreal engine is not a one-stop solution to just have a quick render engine in your pre-existing workflow quite often it takes a bit longer to actually get to a to a nice looking result in unreal engine because of the scenario that you're in like you know there, there are different things that you need to do to create a nice looking image while with other applications it might be quicker if you're just aiming for an image um, that might be an easier solution but then at the same time, if you, for example, want to create many iterations of something, that's actually a scenario I use it quite often for in the past. For example, in this previous uh, situation, if you just want to create, you know, 50 different iterations of the same scene, um, you save tons of time because it's real time. You can just save out the sequence and you don't need to render it every time. 
So for everyone super hyped about Unreal Engine now and who wants to dip their toes into it, um, the good news is we could convince Matthias to record an intro tutorial, a workshop, a quick start into Unreal Engine. So what are the topics that you're covering in there? I mean, I try to make a really quick, rough, no bullshit introduction to the platform that will leave open tons of questions. In this one, I'm just touching on um, the basic layout of the engine, how, how it works, um, how to use RTX, how to throw in a few lights, um, arrange a composition, a camera, all these kind of things. But And then there are also a few goodies like the um, we're briefly looking at the foliage tool and the decal actor, um, which is more like two um, slightly more advanced techniques inside Unreal. Who is this aimed at? I'm really just at complete beginners who are curious about the software. I don't even know if you should sit down and try to um, follow me step by step. I think it might also be a good tutorial to just watch and see how how do I use the engine. Um, just if you have never used it before, it might be 40 minutes to to get you excited about it and, and start creating your own scenes. Do you have any future plans uh, where to take this workshop? Any future ideas? Any Anything you want to cover? I'm already working on a second workshop, which will be an introduction to Blueprints. Um, Blueprints is the visual scripting inside Unreal Engine, which is something I'm really fond of. I really like the abilities you get by using Blueprints to build more like generative systems. And this introduction will be um, just looking at the basics on how to use Blueprint, how to spawn actors, how to make them behave in certain ways. Yeah, this is basically the next step, and then we'll we'll take it from there. Cool. Very much looking forward to this. So, Matthias, thanks for being with us. Thanks for showing us how to use this new, arcane, weird, beautiful thing. And very much looking forward to having you here more often. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.